Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. And ladies and gentlemen, this, this right here, this is the Slash I've been waiting for. You know, as a kid, I never had the original Slash action figure. I know, I'm still bummed about it, even now. Uh, so I had to get my Slash fix somewhere else. I tried watching the cartoon, but uh, this Slash was like kind of goofy and weird looking, like, you know, despite trying to destroy everything that he saw, uh, he lacked the look. He didn't look dangerous. He had like these goofy teeth and I don't know. He just was not my Slash. I tried looking at video games, but uh, you know, I can only rent Turtles in Time back then, you know? My parents didn't buy it for me. So unfortunately, I only got to fight this Slash every other weekend. So lucky for me, I had one form of media that I could always rely on. You know, comic books. My, like, my dad wasn't going to walk in the room and be like, hey, quit watching that. I could look at this comic book all day long and check this out. There he was, Slash. In my opinion, this is one of the best looking Slashes in all existence. Um, not to mention, the storyline in this Ninja Turtle Adventures comic is just fantastic. Phenomenal. You know, Dean Clarion did such a great job of keeping me excited and intrigued from issue to issue. So, you know, I don't want to delay uh, getting to this box any further because, uh, you know, I got a lot to talk about in this video, including a, uh, a full look at um, Archie's slash comic book appearances and also a side by side uh, compare with this guy and some of the comic book art you know, as he was drawn by Chris Allen, mostly. Whenever I look at this action figure, that's who immediately I think of. That that uh, panel I just showed you, drawn by Chris Allen, he looks just like that, and that's fantastic. You know, the artwork on this box is done by Ken uh, Mitroni, and he is a fantastic artist, too. Uh, I kind of think that Ken is my favorite Adventures comic artist, but it kind of goes back and forth because I, I kind of look at the Adventure comics in, um, I don't know, like two sections or something. Like the first half is more kitty or something and uh, fun. <laughs> and it's drawn by Ken Mitroni and it's just very entertaining. And then when it gets into the Chris Allen comics, it becomes more serious, you know? And I still like that too, you know? I don't think you can go wrong from issues five through, I think, um, 70. <laughs> so as I mentioned, Ken Mitroni did the fantastic uh, artwork here. And he actually did draw Slash back in the day, um, the issue right after the one I just showed you. But obviously this Slash is a lot different the one than the, uh, the one drawn by Chris, but still fantastic. You cannot beat Ken's um, exciting and um, dynamic artwork, you know? It just looks like the characters are fully animated, even just on a comic book page. But Slash looks really awesome down at the bottom here. I do like the front of this. I love how it's set up just like a comic book where you have issue one and I guess all the other adventure toys will have, you know, two, three, four and all that kind of stuff. NECA Adventure Series. Very nice. Um, on the side here, you have another uh, piece of artwork drawn by Ken and that is fantastic looking too. I really, you know, look, say what you will about NECA and some of their the problems you have with the articulation or the... Um, um, distribution and stuff like that, but I just love how these guys are willing to dive as deep as they can into the pockets of Ninja Turtle Ultra fans, because stuff like this just makes you excited. It's like, this guy was drawing comic books back in the 90s, you know, I've been thinking about him for the past 30 years, and NECA pulled him out to do some amazing artwork of the Ninja Turtles again for these awesome boxes, you know, I don't know. It's just... It's very, very cool and makes you happy as a Ninja Turtle fan. Like, finally, like, all my heroes from back in the day are coming back. Over here, you have another nice shot of Slash holding his, uh, in the cartoon, is his binky or his palm tree. When I get into the adventure comic books, you'll see how the palm tree even, you know, um, is an important factor in those books. All right, on the back here... Uh, you have a nice setup that looks, you know, like a comic book. It's got some nice action shots of Slash. Um, not the most dynamic, but, you know, just just cool, you know. Mostly just shots of him. It would have been... 
I guess they don't really have any Ninja Turtles in this line. It would have been interesting to see him like battling some of the guys or something. Or maybe have him like, I don't know, fighting some of the other mute animals. I don't know. It's good for what it is. You know, I like it. Nickelodeon is very uh, noticeable there in orange. And then just, you know, all the same stuff. What I'm really excited about is Man Ray, Jaguar, and Dreadmon coming out in this toy line. Because Jaguar and Dreadmon, I've always said that they should have action figures made. You know, I always thought that Playmates should make, like, um, brand new, original, like, style Playmates action figures where they finally would make, like, a Jaguar in the, you know, the four-inch scale or whatever it is. If you go back to the front and you look on the bottom here... Uh, it says director Randy Falk, Trevor Zamet, uh, sculpt and fabrication by Paul Harding. Paint, Jeff Trapp, Mike Puzo, prototypes, Roger Fernandez, photography, Stephen Mazurik, illustrations, Ken Mitroni, man. And uh, packaging, Travis ha Travis Hasback. You know, I was really excited too when Ken did the, um, the San Diego Comic-Con 8-pack way back in the dead for day for the Fred Wolf series. That was fantastic, too. So, like I said, I'm as a lifelong Ninja Turtle adventure fan, I'm really, really glad to see more artwork by him. So, I can't take it anymore. I got to open this guy up, move him around. Hopefully, everything is nice. Hopefully, you got no joint problems and stuff like that. And uh, I will talk to you in a second. Real quick, I did try to find the panel that this backdrop comes from. And uh, from what I can tell... Part of it comes from this uh, panel right here with Krang riding the barrel, you know, like the building and these over here, but obviously some of it was redrawn. There's also another uh, panel a couple pages later, which sort of show like three barrels sort of stacked on each other like that, just kind of like that. So I think like this is possibly scanned from the original and then maybe all this stuff over here is redrawn. Even if you look at like the smoke here and if you look at the comic book panel, like it, it matches perfectly. All right, that's it. Here he is, free from his prison of cardboard and plastic and ready to scour the universe for the most perfect palm tree in all existence. And to be honest with you, uh, make my childhood dreams come true. Yeah, that's right. This uh, Archie Slash debuted all the way back in August of 1991. I was seven years old and I've waited 31 years for this guy to get, come out and now he's standing on my table. Uh, was he worth the wait? You bet your spiky shell he was. So originally when I looked at this guy, I thought that Paul, you know, did a great job matching how he looked in the comic book. He looks like one of Chris Allen's illustrations just left off the page, right? He has the same uh, bulky body, you know, the um, the sort, sort of uh, stunted but uh, muscular and wide silhouette. But in all honesty, that was a, uh, you know, just a, a wonderful coincidence, all right? Because... This body was definitely sculpted uh, as Toka first, right? Because there are some things about um, Toka here specifically that made it to this slash action action figure, um, what, including this like wide gap between the shell. You know, they removed the spots, but they left the wide gap. Um, all the spots on his body, you know. That's all left on the Slash action figure. I think that's just to make him look cool. Slash never has spots in the comic book, but he looks awesome with the spots. I like him, you know? Ooh, I can't believe it. Already, I have to take back what I said. Look at that. On the cover of the uh, Mighty Mutanimals, number nine, he does have spots on his body, but he doesn't have it inside of the comic book. <laughs> and the other thing is uh, the shoulder pads. And they put this uh, armor on Slash's uh, shoulders, and if you look at him in the comic books, the, the armor is always on the side of his bicep. I was kind of hoping, just for the uh, the sake of tradition, that um, Slash would have been sculpted first, and then they would have built Toka off of him. But nope, it's the opposite. All right, so before we take a deeper look at the toy, let's discuss Slash's short but impactful comic book history in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles adventure comics. To set this up, no, Slash doesn't appear in this comic book, but I should mention that, uh, you know, in issue number 13, there's this huge battle between the good guys and the bad guys over the uh, the turnstone. And um, in the end, the turnstone goes to Chirube, which uh, she's an alien. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce her name, but that's how I've always said it since I was a kid, Chirube. 
Uh, the turnstone goes to her, and she uses the turnstone to send um, the villains uh, away from the good guys. Uh, the Shredder gets sent to uh, prison. Bebop and Rocksteady get sent to a, uh, a planet without man, so they can run uh, free like the creatures they are at heart. And Krang uh, gets banished to Morbus, a toxic waste dump world. Bummer. So, fast forward to uh, issue number 23. The first appearance of Slash. Um, in this issue, Krang is still banished on Morbus, and he's slowly sinking into a toxic sea, bitching about his hatred of turtles everywhere when uh, he's confronted by a dark figure uh, with only one thing on his mind. Palm tree. Now I'll give you two guesses as to who this is. That's right, Slash. Now, uh, you know, I absolutely love Slash's chain of phrases here, right? My palm tree, gone, paradise, lost, kill to regain, blood spills, gore thrills, carrion carcass corpse, vultures circle for a taste, butchery at my hands. I want my palm tree. Help or die, Pinky. <laughs> that's, that's great, you know? As a seven-year-old, I was like, badass, you know? That's the kind of lines that uh, make you want to go to your room and close your doors and shut your blinds and put on some Sepultura or Pantera and brood. So uh, Krang tells Slash that uh, he can take him to a world filled with palm trees if he saves him from this sinking barrel. Uh, and Slash agrees, you know. Slash tells Krang's that the vultures named him Slash and that he was sentenced to Morbus for his crimes. You see, not only is Morbus a wasteland, it's also a prison planet filled with killers, berserkers, uh, massacreers, man-eaters, brain poachers, soul thieves, oil company executives, and lawyers. So, these two naughty dudes uh, move along until they uh, see a prison ship, and they decide to hijack it. Now, uh, this is where they meet another all-time favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures character for me. And uh, that's this guy right here with the horns. And he is uh, Belly Bomb. I mean, look at that guy. Like, what a weird and awesome looking design, you know? NECA, this guy right here. If I, have a, if I made a, a top 10 uh, Archie Adventures list, this guy would be probably in my top five. So... Slash and Krang uh, befriend this guy, and they murder these prison guards. I mean, abs actually murder in an Archie comic book. That's right. And Belly Bomb murders some people, too. I like it here where Slash says, uh, Cold steel meets hot flesh. That's why they call me Slash. <laughs> After all the guards have been disposed of, the terrible trio board the ship, and uh, they head for the planet Earth. You know what's interesting about this uh, next issue teaser right here is Slash is colored as he appears in this comic book. And if you look at the actual issue, he's colored like he appears in the uh, the original toy line, you know, with that sort of, uh, I don't know, what kind of green do you even say that is? It's a weird, Slash is like a weird green, you know? He's not a, a regular green. <laughs> All right, so on the way to Earth, uh, the prison ship, autopilot takes Slash, Belly Bomb, and Krang to one of the galaxy's Eden planets to drop off some of its live cargo. Um, apparently there's planets that um, are protected by um, some of the elder races, and they devote these planets to just allowing animals to run around free. And wouldn't you know it, guess who's here? Bebop and Rocksteady. Crazy! Um... You know, these two guys say that they're bored because there's no crime on this Eden planet. And uh, they decide to uh, head back to Earth with uh, Krang, Slash, and Belly Bomb. I actually like the artwork a lot in the beginning of this book. It's, bun it's done by uh, Garrett Ho. I think his, um, his style is very cartoony and very expressive, very animated, you know. It looks very similar to uh, Ken Matroni's artwork, but you can tell that it's definitely not that. Um, 
I don't know. I like it. But then later on, it changes. So Slash and the other villains arrive at Earth, and Krang steers the spaceship right into the Shredder's lair. Um, and he interrupts a fight between the guys, the turtle guys, and old Shredhead. As the villains exit the ship, the turtles are stunned at what they see. An evil turtle? With Krang? Donnie says that Slash is different from them, uh, that he's a snapper. And Slash wastes no time at all, saying, The vultures gave me my name. They call me Slash. Um, but then he gets kicked immediately by Raphael. Like, man, he is, he's getting his ass handed to him already. So uh, Leo and Raph gang up on Slash. I like how uh, Slash keeps calling the guys cousins. It's just kind of a little funny touch. Um, Donnie and Mike also move in on Slash. But uh, just before all four of these guys can team up and start attacking him, this, this issue pretty much wraps up. Um, now, I'm, I'm trying not to go over too much here, you know, that isn't Slash. But uh, I will say this, you know, just so it doesn't seem weird that, or abrupt that I'm changing it here. I absolutely love the storyline in this, where Krang fits his body on top of the Shredder's head. Look at that. What a crazy idea. I love that. That also would be in my top five NECA list. I want a Shredder with a Krang head. So as I said before, you know, uh, I really liked the artwork in the beginning of this comic book, but the second half of it uh, just felt like really jarring. Like, I, I don't know. It's done by Jim Lawson. I think Jim Lawson has done some good artwork but for whatever reason, even as a kid, I was like, what the hell happened here? Like, how do you go from this to this? Like, it's, I, I don't know. Like, you know, Garrett Ho, he is, um, as I said, he's very cartoony, very expressive. But the characters are very, very solid, right? And Jim Lawson is also very cartoony. But his, his artwork is almost, like, abstract sometimes. And, uh, you know, it just always felt a little off to me. All right, on to issue number 25. Uh, this one is drawn by Chris Allen, which... <laughs> I have no complaints there whatsoever. But, wow, look at that cover. Now, this cover was, again, drawn by uh, Ken Micheroni, and it's, it's wonderful. I love how Belly Bomb is blue here, and I love all the expressions on the turtles' faces. They're all great. Inside the book here, the turtles are about ready to confront uh, Krang Shredder and uh, Slash attacks them. Again, you have some more great uh, Slash lines here, you know. Shall I slash their heads off, Pinky? That's what he calls Krang. Or shall I slice and dice them into itsy bitsy teeny weeny cubes for belly bombs of puree? Great. <laughs> it's interesting to see uh, Chris Allen's early work too because um, uh, his panels are very dynamic, but even here, back when he first started drawing, like, his turtles appear more, uh, cartoony too. Much more animated and, uh, exaggerated. You know, a little more squash and stretch than his later, more, um, serious drawings, I would say. Again, more, uh, great lines by Slasher. Deception, decapitation, delicatessen, my blade only has eyes for you, little cousin. That's, you know, that stuff is great. Um, and then the next line on the next page is another cool one. The color of your bandana reminds me of blood. Your blood. The blood that shall pour forth in torrents the moment you falter. <laughs> That's, and Raph says, The only thing that'll pour out of me, pal, is the strength and courage to kick your shell. All right. Nice heroic line. So Slash only really has this little battle with Raph. And, uh... And the top of this page, he knocks Raph down. He gives him a nice swift kick to the stomach. Knocks him out. And then he takes off to look for his palm tree. Because Slash only has one thing on his mind, and that's palm trees. Eventually, he does find one here at a Pets R Us. And he takes it, and then he's happy. My palm tree. And then you have that nice heart in the sky. I love that. I always thought that was funny. Uh, and that is pretty much the last of uh, Slash in this story. He's just out there, running around. Um, I love this comic book. The conclusion of this with Bebop and Rocksteady is a favorite of mine. 
And, you know, I just really love how Dean Clarion wrote the characters. I, I don't know. I, I highly recommend this three-part story. You know, it, it'll, you could read this thing in like 20 minutes, but I just, I don't know. I love it. You know, it's, it's a comic book from my childhood that still holds up today. So if you are interested in picking up uh, issues 23 through 25, the first appearance of Slash, unfortunately, you're going to pay like, I think the last I looked, it was like 10 to $30 just to get this issue number 23. You know, it seems crazy to me because back in my day, like nobody even cared about like, you know, making a big deal about the first appearance of, uh, of these characters in these Archie comics. Um, I always try to get the, the covers without the UPC on them just so I can get the whole artwork. Um, now I was going to say, if you want to read them and you don't want to spend the, I don't know, 30 to $50 or however, how much it's going to cost you to buy these three issues, you could go and buy the trade paperback. But unfortunately this thing seems to be somewhat rare too. And this thing will fetch you about, uh, I don't know, 30 to, I think there's one on eBay right now for like 70 bucks. You know, my biggest, um, uh, my biggest advice to you, if you want to read any of these, uh, don't go to eBay, go to comic book stores and maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe you'll find a comic book store that, you know, hasn't decided to, uh, look up the prices of these Ninja Turtle comic books. I do love this cover of this, uh, volume seven of, uh, Ninja Turtles Adventures published by IDW Comics because, uh, you know, the artwork was done by Steve Levine, but, um, the inking was done by Peter Laird. And man, does it show. That looks like such a Peter Laird um, inking. Like you could definitely see with like all the grit and the shell and even the way those that bicep there looks, looks so much like a Peter Laird drawing. And I also love how uh, Slash and Belly Bomb are colored like they, uh, how they appeared on those uh, adventure comic book covers from back in the day, even though they didn't, they don't match the uh, insides of the books. So after that, Slash disappeared from the adventure universe for about two years. And then uh, he finally showed up in Mighty Mutanimals number nine, the final issue of the series. Um, in this comic book, Slash somehow uh, made his way all the way down to Rio de Janeiro. And uh, I don't know how he did that, but he's down there and he's causing havoc looking for a, a palm tree. In this issue, the artwork is done by Mike Cazala. Cazala? And uh, his style is, you know, very cartoony and very expressive. And fun, you know, like, look at these crazy expressions. They're great. You know, it's funny how these um, comic books are more expressive and more cartoony than the actual Ninja Turtle comic book, or the cartoon. You know, the cartoon is very much on model. There wasn't very much squash or stretch at all. Uh, and these things are just wacky and crazy. But the comic books are more serious than the cartoons. Like... Even though there's these crazy, wacky, goofy movements and stuff like that. Like, people get murdered and, I don't know, there's a lot of dark stuff in these Archie comic books that would never, ever appear in those uh, Fred Wolf animated episodes. So, Slash is uh, wreaking havoc. I mean, he's even knocking out tanks with uh, his wrist blades. That's crazy. And the only thing that can stop him is uh, some missiles. <laughs> and he gets shot with a... Uh, a big Emma missile. Why big Emma? I don't get it. But uh, as you can see here, Slash is left knocked out on the ground. So after Slash gets uh, knocked out, the mighty Mutanimals are on their uh, their island or an island that they just came to, and they find a newspaper, some trash, litter. It's everywhere. Um. And uh, in the newspaper, it says Monster Caught, and it has a picture of Slash. And the Mighty Mutanimals mistake him for one of the Ninja Turtles, so they decide to go rescue him. They actually manage to sneak into this base, like, really easily, and they just find Slash laying chained up in a cage. Mondo Gecko is able to open up the door and get the wrist cuffs off of him, and they try to carry Slash back home. But Mondo steps on a twig and it accidentally wakes Slash up. And Slash, you know, wigs out. He goes nuts. I mean, look at him here. <laughs> like I said, very expressive. Very fun to look at. Very animated. Um, he attacks the Mighty Butte animals. One of my favorite lines in this comic book is, uh, 
Wingnut comes in with a palm tree and smacks Slash on the head with it. And then Slash is like, how dare you use a palm tree as a weapon? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's great. The only mighty mutanimal who is uh, mighty enough to take Slash out is Leatherhead. Um, there's just there's just this little tiny little battle between them where Leatherhead grabs his arm, uh, twists it around his back, and then knocks him down on the ground. Like, look at that. That's nice. You can really see the motion in this uh, still drawing. It's, it's, it's nicely done. So Slash uh, calms down and he tells them uh, about his previous encounters with the turtles and Krang and all that. And he also tells them about his, uh, his origin. How he grew up on Palmadice, a beautiful planet filled with palm trees. One day, the Vertimort lumberjacks came and cut down every single tree so they could be used in the Galactic President's fireplace. And Slash swore he'd take vengeance on all authority figures. That's how he ended up on uh, Morbus. He must have been killing some, uh, some important people, I assume. But look at him. Look how sad he is there. That's, that's just not right. So, several hours later... Uh, the Mighty Mutant Animals take Slash to a different island than the one that their home base is on. And, uh, you know, they tell him that uh, this can be his new home because it's a nature preserve and no human can go there. Now, look at how happy Slash is. Finally, he has a place filled with palm trees uh, and he'll be left alone, right? Well, I wish I could, uh, you know... Say this was uh, Slash's happy ending, but things are going to get real crappy real quick for this poor dude. Consider this a spoiler warning, all right? You have been warned. After the cancellation of the Mighty Mutanimals comic book, Slash and the Mighty Mutanimals begin to appear in a regular... Uh, in the regular Team and T Adventures comic in a backup story called Megadeth. Uh, this is issue 48. This has part one of Megadeth. Um, now here's, you know, here's one of, the, one of the things with Jim Lawson, right? I think lots of times I like Jim Lawson if he's inked by a certain person, all right? Because if you look at the artwork by Jim Lawson here, it is inked by Eric Talbot and it is just amazing looking. Like, I love that. Um, you know, Eric Talbot also, uh, inked Lawson in, uh, Return to New York and his issue was probably my favorite one. Um, so in, uh, part one of Megadeth here, um, Slash does not appear and, uh, nothing really happens other than teasing this group of mercenaries who, uh, have been hired to kill the mighty mutanimals. That's it for that part. In part two, in this issue right here, Slash does not appear again. But, uh, you know, it's, it's building to something here. In part two, uh, the Mighty Mutant Animals are on their island, their base, and uh, future Don and future Raf show up to help them build their base to protect them. Um, once uh, future Don and future Raf leave, the Mighty Mutant Animals get attacked by this mercenary. Group. Now, uh, I've seen this called different names. Uh, on the Turtle Wiki, I've seen that they're called the Gang of Four, and I've also seen that they are can be called Megadeth. I don't know. I just call them the Four Mercenaries. I don't think they actually say Gang of Four in the comic book at all. Um, in uh, Part 3 here, no Slash again. And uh, all that appears here is... Um, you sort of have a recap, which takes like a whole page, and then the mercenaries attack, and there is a battle. That's it. But again, you know, I love Jim Lawson's artwork here, inked by uh, Talbot. Part four, still no slash. And the battle continues. Um... Now this right here is like one of my absolute favorite uh, pieces of Jim Lawson art from these uh, comic books. 
Because, like, the way that it's inked, like, I don't know, it's like almost like a, I don't know, like a Bisley inking. Like, Tal Talbot is doing some amazing work here. Yeah, so these mercenaries continue to fight uh, these dudes. The Mighty Mute Animals. Future Raf. Uh, look at that. He's sticking his metal tongue up his eye. That is no good. And that's all for that. In part five, guess what happens? The battle continues. This is, he really stretched this out quite a lot. The battle continues. Leatherhead gets the upper hand on some of these guys and then they run away. And uh, after they run away, future Don is like confused. He's wondering why are these guys atta attacking the mighty mute animals now? Uh, historically, these dudes weren't supposed to show up for another two months. All right. So somebody is messing with the timeline. It's a mystery. And I know what you're thinking. Where the hell has Slash been? Well, guess what? In part six, no, Slash doesn't appear. No, I'm just kidding. Slash actually appears in part six. Um, it opens up with Slash uh, sitting on his island. Uh, he's uh, thinking about his memories of Palmadice and his time on Earth. And uh, over on the Mighty Mutanimal Island base, uh, Mondo Gecko is hanging out with his girlfriend, Candy uh, Fine, is her name? Um, so, in this issue, uh, the Mighty Mutanimals are discussing these mercenaries that attacked them, trying to figure out what the hell is going on, when all of a sudden, a meteorite crashes on their island, and it creates like a little explosion. And uh, Slash sees this all the way over on his island, so he decides to jump in the water and swim over there, saying, That sound, that light, an explosion on that distant isle. More crimes against my adopted world? No, not if I can help it. And woe to any who get in the way of Slash. You know, this artwork by Lawson is, is really nice, too. Uh, some nice foreshortening there of uh, Slash swimming through the waters. I like that. All right, let's move on to part seven, the final part of Megadeth. And again, pff, spoiler warning, all right. All right, in part seven of Megadeth, uh, the Mighty Mutanimals is ex inspect this uh, meteorite. And from within come Skull and Bean. Uh, if you don't know, Skull and Bean are the generals of the evil Unsex Space Queen, uh, Maligna. They were last defeated by the Mighty Mutanimals in the original Mighty Mutanimal three-part limited series. <laughs> and, uh, you know, these guys are back for revenge. Now, you know, the fight here is pretty good. It's nice. Uh, it seems as though the, uh, the Mighty Mutanimals are winning, and they actually knock both of them out. And you're like, ah... Oh, Good, you know, that's crisis averted, right? <laughs> well, no, because then all of a sudden, uh, those mercenaries come and they totally just start shooting the mighty mute animals. I mean, look at that. They're just getting shot. And then that guy right there, he blows them up with the bazooka. That is crazy. They, they totally killed the mighty mute animals. It's, man, I can't... I can't believe that that happened. And uh, right after that, Future Dawn and Future Raph show up. And, you know, they're like, what the hell happened? All the Mighty Mute animals are dead. And if that wasn't bad enough, Slash pops out of the water and he thinks that they were responsible for the murder. So after this, uh, uh, the Mighty Mute animal storyline... I mean, that storyline crosses over into the regular Ninja Turtle ongoing series um, and became becomes the main story called Terracide. All right. Terracide. It's a three part series. All right. This is in uh, issue number 55. All right. In this issue, Slash attacks the uh, the future turtles. I remember you cousins long ago. You hurt me and now you kill my friends. So now you die. That's great. <laughs> Slash actually gets the better hand of these guys. You know, he, he totally beats the snot out of both of them. 
conks their heads together. Um, and just as about as he's getting ready to kill Donnie, you know, he says, and now to avenge the death of the mute animals, the death of my only friends, blood for blood. Candy Fine here uh, runs in and stops him and tells him that uh, that it wasn't them, you know. Uh, it was those four mercenaries. It was these robot guys with guns. They killed the mighty mute animal, or they killed the mute animals. They killed my, my Mondo. So Slash and the Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, make up and all is forgiven. You know, I can't believe this. Look at this. Pools of blood around the mighty mute animals. Gruesome. And, you know, in my opinion, that's not even the worst of it. The worst of it is um, how, like, if you look at pictures of the guys just laying on the ground, they're dead and their eyes are still open. Like, man, that is rough. So after burying the mute animals, the uh, the future turtles decide that they need to go find the present day turtles. Um, I love this panel here of Slash just sitting on a beach, sad. You know, it's it's a nice touch. That shovel next to him, like, just really cements how sad the situation is. Like poor Slash is only friends. Uh, Candy tells Slash to come with them, so they all board this uh, cool uh, manta ray ship or plane and head towards the Ninja Turtles. Uh, future Don knows exactly where the turtles are, um, since he's from the future, and he remembers what they did that day. The present day turtles are actually heading back to New York after fighting Animus in Israel. Uh, they need to get Mikey to a doctor because he's been temporarily blinded. If everything was as it should be, the turtles would reach New York and Mikey would meet the doctor, but uh, since someone's messing with the timeline, they were shot down by the mercenary Deadeye. Um, the, the future turtles and Slash find the downed plane um, and uh, they manage to pull everybody out of the ocean. Except uh, Michelangelo, who was uh, picked up by the Coast Guard and also the Ninja Turtles pilot. I don't see her anywhere. I think she just died in the crash. So that is... Uh, a bummer. Splinter and the Turtles are a, a little uh, confused to see Slash, but, you know, everything seems to work out fine and everybody seems to be getting along. Uh, they all decide to um, take a break and uh, stop at a, a sandbar to gather their thoughts. And uh, that is when they get attacked by Null. Um, Null is in, like, full demon form here. And, uh, you know, as if Null wasn't bad enough... The, uh, the four mercenaries show up to uh, kill everybody. Uh, what I do like is uh, as soon as Noel shows up, Slash tries to attack him, but uh, Noel, um like sends some fire down upon him. All right. Next up, part two, issue 56. Slash is on the cover of this one by... Uh, this is drawn by Lawson and inked by Talbot. Um... In this issue, the uh, Null and the Gang of Four fight the Ninja Turtles and Slash. I mean, look at that. nice. That's a nice shot of Slash. You killed my only friends. It is your turn to die. Um, Slash is very one-note. <laughs> but it's all right. You know, this is, this is uh, still a cool storyline. Um, Slash is, you know, in full rage mode here. He, uh, he starts cutting through this, uh, waster guy. That's all very cool looking. He's not dead yet, though. Noel pulls a, uh, a nasty trick on Candy Fine. You know, he pretends that he's Mondo Gecko. And when Candy goes in to hug him, he turns out to be Noel and he kidnaps her. He's evil. Um, what's cool here is, uh... You know, Slash is still fighting these guys. And he does actually kill Waster here. And that's when everybody learns that these guys are not actually humans. They're robots. And this guy's like, fools, we are more than just robots. We are thonosoids. We are dead flesh joined with the most powerful cybernetic polyzirconium circuitry. Future Don's like, i.e. they're fancy robots. Let's waste them. So then they kill them. He cuts that guy's head off. Crazy. And Ninjara 
smash his dead eye right in the face with a rock, breaking that giant eyeball. That is gruesome. I think what's cool is uh, Raph actually um, interrogates this guy here. And when he's done with him, he actually has half of his face cut off. That's, again, pretty gruesome for uh, Archie comic books. But that's that's what makes these comic books so great, right? So future Raph learns that uh, Noel is on the uh, the dark side of the moon. So uh, most of these guys head to the dark side of the moon to uh, fight Noel, rescue Candy, um, while uh, Donatello and Leonardo head towards uh, this Coast Guard ship so they can save Michelangelo. All right, on to part three, the final, the final issue featuring Slash. Once again, Slash is on the cover here and it is a nice cover. Again, drawn by Jim Blossom and inked by Eric Talbot. Um, a lot of nice detail here, gritty detail. So as the heroes arrive at the dark side of the moon, uh, they discover Maligna's hive mind or hive world. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, big deal. Um, they managed to board the uh, this hive world. And then they start making their way through these disgusting catacombs to search for Maligna, the evil queen herself. Got a nice shot of Slash here with all the, the turtles. Two rafts? Crazy. On the way to Maligna, uh, Slash kills these uh, malignoids, these insect uh, troopers here. Very cool. And then he cuts this, you see this giant like organic looking thing? He cuts that through that. And it turns out that that organic thing is a um, an organic gyroscope for this whole planet. And once he cuts that, it just starts going haywire and spinning around in circles. And it's direct, directly connected to Maligna. So that alerts her that the turtles are all on the ship. And then she sends all these malignoids after them. And look at that. Look at that two-page spread. That is wonderful. Man, you just don't get shots like these in comic books anymore. I like how as the guys like mow through all these insects and chopping them to bits, they start to get covered in uh, insect guts. It's gross, cool, at the same time, it's totally 90s. <laughs> Eventually they slaughter all of them. Can you believe that? And um, while they are doing that, Maligna, Skull and Bean, manage to patch up this uh, organic gyroscope. Maligna warns them that uh, if the gyroscope does not remain intact, the this whole planet will uh, plunge into a sun. Um, but Slash decides that, you know, enough is enough. And Maligna must be stopped for good. So he decides to uh, slash through the gyroscope again. After he slashes the gyroscope, he uh, does the heroic thing. Uh, he distracts Skull, Bean, and Maligna long enough so that they can't repair the gyroscope. And also while the other heroes um, can escape. And he plunges to his death in the sun. Heroically. <sighs> What a, what a sad end for such a cool character, but um, you know, at least he went out on a on a high note, right? Now, there's one final thing that I should mention here uh, before we talk about the action figure, and that uh, there is a slash pinup in this cool uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Universe source book. Uh, this is issue two of two, although there was a three. So, um, but here you go. A nice biography and a beautiful uh, piece of artwork by A.C. Farley. I mean, that looks amazing. You know, it's cool that they were able to get a lot of those Mirage guys to work on these Archie comic books. Because, I mean, I mean that's, that's just great. And last, for the sake of, uh, I don't know, trying to be as complete as possible, sometimes they put Slash's head on top of the letter columns page. <laughs> I mean, he was a popular character. I mean, you can't argue that. So let's take a quick look at Slash in the comic books. Um, I think this Slash action figure looks so much like this drawing, you know. He's just got the same basic build, 
I don't know. He looks great. The face, uh, the expression looks just like that. Even the, you know, the way his eyebrow was sort of sloped down just matches that perfectly. Um, the belt here uh, matches, you know, it looks the same way. It's kind of got that white with the um, the blue highlights or the blue shading, I would say. Um, the color of the, the, uh, the bandanas and the knee pads and everything like that, you know, all similar looks great right um the the biggest difference i think between this slash and the slash in his first appearance is um the shell in the original comic book is much more um detailed uh like you know you have all these tiny little squares inside of the, the you know the bigger shapes um but chris allen changes the way he draws slash even i'll show you later on uh his weapon here changes in his uh, later appearances but uh but yeah, you know, I think this is a good representation of uh, how he appears in this comic book, but I'll also show you how he looks in some other ones. Now, in Slash's final appearances, I think the way uh, Chris Allen drew Slash is even closer to this action figure because he kind of squished him a little more. Like, he kind of shrunk his head into his shoulders a bit more, kind of like this. I guess more like the original uh, action figure. As you can see, like, you know, they squished the head. Like, he barely has... A neck here, right? Um, he did make him bigger and bulkier. He changed the color of the belt. So obviously your best reference is um, Ninja Turtles Adventures number 23, which is the first appearance of Slash. Uh, or the issue 25, which is also drawn by Chris Allen. 24 has Garrett Ho and Jim Lawson, and he kind of changes styles you know, throughout that comic. Um, but even the... Uh, the shell here, um, the way that it's segmented is more like this uh, action figure. Like, look at his back here. Like, that matches that almost perfectly. Um, and it, like, uh, you know, all these little pouches are the same color. Um, the uh, the arm armor <laughs> or the, the shoulder pad here. I don't know, just the basic shape of the shell looks great, you know. So, like I said, happy coincidence, you know. This all worked out perfectly fine. All right, so let's go over articulation. Um, Slash here has a, uh, there's a ball in the, the base of the neck here, and there's also a ball at the bottom of the head. Um, so you can get some nice looking up, nice looking down. And you, uh, when I first got this, the ball at the base of the neck just like popped right out every time I moved the neck. So what I had to do is I had to warm up the neck and really shove that in there and let it uh, cool. And once it did that, now it seems like it's locked into place. So that is good. Um, the shoulders have rotation. And he's a very stiff guy. And uh, also a hinge. Jeez Louise. But the hinge... Oh my gosh. That is stiff. It'll stop, you know, this, uh, this shoulder pad. You do not want to push that too far and then accidentally knock that off of there. So your uh, movement is hindered a little bit there. Um, the uh, bicep has a swivel, but it seems like it actually uh, it's clear here. It doesn't affect this shoulder pad at all, which is nice. Uh, you have double jointed elbows. You have wrists, and I'll be honest with you, it is a little difficult to move him around because every time you like put your hand in a different spot, you get stabbed by, you know, either these uh, wrist daggers. Or the spikes on the back of the shell. He is a dangerous action figure. Um, you can see here he has a, a point of articulation there. So you can kind of rotate him around. But it's a little... I don't know. I'm not really getting much. That's like his... I don't know. It's, it's his upper torso, tar uh, upper torso articulation. So you can rotate it there because he doesn't have a waist cut. And uh, I don't know. It doesn't... It moves a little bit, but, you know, you can't really get too much out of it. The uh, the hips here have these neck of ball joints, which are great. Um, you can move that leg forward pretty high. Move it back. And then you can rotate it around that ball, which is great. Now, the knee joints, I'll be honest with you, he's got double-jointed knees. But I have not been able to get both of the top knee joints to move. I've only been able to get the bottom ones because of how stiff he is. Yes, great.
the uh, the bottom of the ankles here are hinged, and you also have ankle rockers. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventure Slash was such an intriguing character back in the day. He was a simple-minded, brutal psychopath who would do anything to find his one true love, the magnificent palm tree. I think this toy perfectly captures Slash's personality with his uh, rage-filled expression, and it perfectly captures his bulky proportions and spiky body. You know, this dude just oozes danger. And I actually kept poking my hands every time I tried to switch one of his hands or just try to move him around, to be honest with you. Much like a lot of these uh, turtle figures, you know, with the huge shell, it can be kind of hard to pose them, you know, um, throwing a dynamic punch because, understandably, the shell gets in the way. And I think the only part on his body where I really felt a little hindered was his shoulders. Like, it's just, I don't know, you can't really have him reach up or anything like that. Um... He is pretty top heavy, so posing him in a, a running pose is a little tricky, but it can be done. Um, you know, it would probably help if I could get his top knee joints to move, but as they are, I just can't get the, the top ones to move at all. You know, I didn't notice any uh, paint flaking off his body as I moved him and posed, his, posed him in these uh, pictures, so that's pretty amazing. I can't remember the last time I bought something from NECA that didn't have that problem. Um, not only that, but the paint job is solid, you know, uh, nice, uh, clean and crisp. And, uh, I don't really have any blotches, so that's great. I guess my biggest complaint is I think that Slash should have included a palm tree. Um, I'm going to go over accessories in a minute, but all he came with was, uh, two weapons. Like he should have come with a palm tree, you know, especially since, um, uh, the Fred Wolf series Slash had a palm tree. They could have just reused that mold and included that here. You know, especially since he found that little palm tree in uh, issue 25. You know, that would have been a perfect um, match for that comic book panel. So, now let's talk about uh, Slash's two accessories. And his hands. Alright, so first up you have the Psycho Psy. That's this weapon right here. Um, this is the only weapon that Slash uses throughout the comic books. And uh, if you look at his um, first appearances from issues uh, 23 through 25, there's like a little, sort of like this little, uh, you know, T at the end of it, you know, a little cross, I guess, going across the, the tip of the blade. Um, but then if you look at the later issues, it does not have that. Now, this version from NECA uh, does not have that little T going across the tip there. Now, this was actually, uh, you know, uh, based off of the original Psycho Psy that was included with Slash, you know, the original 1990 action figure. Um, now, the brand new Super 7 Ultimates version also has a brand new super, uh, uh, Psycho Psy. And, uh, you know, there's something I've also been wondering about here is, um, you know... Super 7 also included this sword. You know, it doesn't have a name. Is this supposed to be just an elongated Psy? Or is it supposed to be like a Psycho Sword? Or maybe, is it supposed to be sort of like, um... Like, this is NECA's, um... Sword that was included with the, uh, Arcade Slash. You know, obviously this is a lot longer than a Psy. Um... Is that Super 7 one, like, them trying to make more of the arcade sword as one of his weapons. I don't know. I'm a little mixed up about that. Or did they just decide to put throw in another sword just for the hell of it? I don't know. Uh, but as you can see uh, in the pictures right before this, he can hold this Psycho Psy. It's a little tricky trying to get that in there because he's got a little bit of a tight grip. But you can get it just fine. And last, uh, you have the comma. Now, this is weird because Slash never uses the comma throughout the comic books. Um, you know, this is obviously looks just like the comma that was included with the 1988 Ninja Turtle action figures. I kind of think this is just NECA's way of uh, sneaking this into the toy line because, I mean, this could go uh, with the Fred Wolf series action figures, you know, perfectly fine. It matches their uh, deco. It's kind of like them uh, sneaking in a fist dagger with uh, Usagi Yojimbo even though he never used that in the cartoon, you know? They just put it in there because it was a way of sneaking that in. So, pretty neat. Slash can hold the comma, too, but uh, the grip is a little loose now. So it just kind of it wiggles around, but you can get him to hold it at least. 
And finally, I should mention uh, his three sets of hands. Slash has six hands altogether, three sets of matching, you know, pairs, I guess. Uh, first, he has a set of gripping hands. And as I showed you, he can hold both of his weapons, not to mention the uh, the palm tree that was included with the Fred Wolf Slash. He also has a, a set of fists, which is great. So he can, you know, punch the Ninja Turtles in the face. Um, and he also has a, a set of uh, reaching hands or grabbing hands or uh, slightly expressive hands. Like, you know, you can use them to uh, offset a nice pose or give a pose a little flair. All right, so that's it. There's only one toy line I really wanted to show him next to, and that's the Fred Wolf series. In my opinion, he fits in extremely well with these guys. You know, his deco is a little different. Like, his ink lines are a little thicker and heavier, and, uh, you know, all of their Fred Wolf ink lines are very thin, just like animation. The, like, the Fred Wolf figures do have, like, the, uh, the shading on the back sides of them. But to be honest with you, when I see this guy next to them, I don't even notice that. It doesn't really stand out and doesn't really seem that weird. Um, I don't know. I think he fits in extremely well with these guys. And if you're if you don't like that slash, you can usually, you know, easily stick him in a box somewhere and just throw this awesome uh, Archie slash in there. I mean, at least until we start to build a, a full Archie line, which I'm hoping for. I hope we get some Archie Ninja Turtles and... Uh, more than just the mute animals. And that's it. I'm sure you know this by now, but, uh, you know, I, I was pretty happy with this guy. I actually did start to get one of the uh, the top knee joints to, to move. I think the problem is the paint stuck to the thigh, which is a problem because now there's like a, a brown line above the joint. You know, whatever. But um, but it did help some of the posing, especially trying to get him to, uh, to run. Although, you know, like I said, the, the top doesn't rotate at all so you, you it's it's tough to get like a nice dynamic run pose or like a wind up to a punch i'm really looking forward to the continuation of this line you know i hope they hit all those guys like belly bomb and even like sarnath would be cool or uh catman do you know even in adulthood like i read archie comics more than i watched the ninja turtle cartoon so i'm i'm really hoping to see this thing you know get bigger and bigger so thanks for watching have a good one and talk to you later